The shako has been used by various nations throughout history and even up to the modern day. There is a debate between many about where it was first used. Some say it was the French in the 1780s or the Austro-Hungarians at a similar time period. I can make a whole video about the origins of the shako and the various nations that had their own variations of it throughout history, like the Germans in the Napoleonic Wars and the First World War. So instead, I will just be focusing on the shakos used by the German police forces from the Weimar era to the one in this video under the Third Reich. In post-war Weimar Germany, the shako was used for the police and it was most commonly found in a complete black colour with various metal insignia in the centre depending on the region they operated in. The base design of these shakos were unchanged from the previous ones of Imperial Germany in 1915, but of course with different insignia. This base design continued to be the official design for the police shakos until the 17th of June 1936, under the orders of Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler, it was modified to bring about uniformity for all police in Germany. But of course there were still others some of the previous designs of the shako used after 1936. The new design of the shako now included a green felt covered body with all the other fittings in black like the brim and also the police eagle emblem with a swastika and oak leaves in the centre. However, certain branches of the police had slight modifications to this design. For example, the Royal Police Wachmeister had brown fittings instead of black. In addition to this, there were parade shakos, which were slightly different, and of course, depending on your rank, there would be certain changes of the shako. So here's an example of a third Reich Schutzpolizei enlisted rank shako. As you can see, this is a 1936 pattern with a green felt body and a black fittings, which tells us that this shako was for the Metropolitan Police, as this would be brown for the Royal Police. Let's look at the various aspects now. We have the blackened chin strap here of leather. This also tells us that this is not an officer's one, as this will be metal. I'm sure you've all seen it by now. We have the massive metal uh, aluminium and insignia. We have the police eagle, swastika and oak leaves around the outside. Above that, we can see the tricolor cockade of red, black and silver. I've got a clear photo up for you now. It is marked on the back, DRGM. Below that is 1936. And at the bottom, the maker, Carl Theodore Dicker, Udenscheid. If we look at the side of the shako now, we can see a few more things on it. We can see two black ventilation holes there on either side as well. And we have the aluminium retaining rings here holding the liner in place. As you can see, brilliant condition. Um, I will put some clear uh, photos and videos at the end of this video to see it in more detail, but absolutely brilliant condition this is in. Um, definitely unissued. There's only a few scratches on the crown and a bit there as you can see, but overall brilliant condition. I'll show you the inside of the shako now. So moving on to the inside, we can see once again, brilliant condition. We can see some slight cracking on the liner, which is to be expected, but overall the liner's in brilliant condition, still got its glossy finish on it. Um, and we also have the drawstring connecting the liner together, which is often missing on any type of headgear. So that's always brilliant to see. On the inside, we can usually see the maker's details on the crown, but in this case, it's not there. Um, I'll put a clear photo up for you now. It seems to have got a number five that has been hand done on there. Um, and maybe a sticker at one time that's been peeled off, it looks like. So if anyone knows where that number five is, please comment down below, it would be much appreciated. Um, if you also see where the ventilation is there, I'll put a clear video up for you now. There's actually a closure mechanism on it so that you can cut off the uh, wind if it's in cold weather, for example, or open it during hot weather, which is a really cool feature that I didn't actually know about before this. So yeah, brilliant condition. Uh, you can see the stitching there, really, really nice. And I'll put you back to the other camera now so you can see the rest of it. In my opinion, I think it's one of the best looking headgear of World War II. Of course, it's not exactly the most practical headgear used, and as a result, many members of the Schutzpolizei disliked it. I would actually sometimes wear alternative headgear when on active duty. I'd definitely recommend having a look at some of the colour footage of the parades they feature in, like the opening of the Haus der Kunst in Munich in 1937, as you will be able to see some of the other types of the Schutzpolizei shakos, like the ones with the white horse hairbrush and the officers one as well. So I'll end the video off now with some close-ups of the shako for anyone interested. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing and liking the video. You don't have to, but it'd be much appreciated. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.